Hey ambitious professionals, it's Linda Rayner of lindarayner.com guiding you to a career in life you'll truly enjoy. So if you are someone right now who is currently going through some emotional hardships, maybe things just aren't working out right now, it's you're going through a rough patch and you're wondering what to do and why it's happening to you, then this video is for you. I wanna be able to connect with you in a deeper way and share with you some of the lessons that I've learned in my life when having gone through times where I felt that everything was falling apart. So let's get into it and hopefully this will help you. As a career strategist, I've been able to help numerous ambitious corporate professionals to land their dream job offers. Now, if career is something that you're struggling with and you want to get one-on-one -on -one professional guidance from me, I can give you details about that at the end of this video. So maybe during this entire coronavirus pandemic, you have recently lost your job. And on top of that, you're finding that staying at home is just not your thing. So you're feeling a little stir crazy or perhaps other things have happened in your life recently beyond just your job and the fact that you have to stay home and you just feel that everything is falling apart, you're going through this really tough time and you're really not sure why it's happening and you're not sure how to handle it. Like I said, I wanna be able to share with you some of my own personal lessons that I've learned when I've gone through tough times because I have and all of us have it's part of life and hopefully these lessons will help you gain some insight into what you're going through and it'll help you to get out of it a little bit more quickly so here are my five personal life lessons the first lesson that I want to impart on you is something that is still a work in progress, but is something that I've been able to harness and gain more awareness around than I have ever had before. So lesson number one says that my value is not based on what I can do, accomplish, or achieve. When I was growing up, I was taught to believe, and this is many of us, our value is based on what we can do, what we can accomplish, what we can achieve, what we can show and demonstrate to others. That all of a sudden, if I don't do anything, if I don't accomplish a certain achievement, if I'm not able to make a certain level of income, or if I'm not able to get a certain grade in school, that somehow I was taught growing up that that means that I'm worthless. You have to ask yourself, do you feel this way about yourself? You know, this pandemic, this coronavirus situation that we're in is leaving a lot of people in a situation where they're having to question themselves and their self-worth because if you're not working, you're questioning why are you even here if you're not able to contribute to your family or contribute to your own lifestyle, to contribute to your own well-being. What's the point of why you're here? And you're probably thinking, I'm worth nothing right now because I'm not making anything. If you recently lost your job and you're having trouble getting back into the market, it. you're probably feeling this way and I just want to share with you this lesson that your value and the work that you do or the money that you make or the things that you're achieving and accomplishing on a daily basis those are completely separate your value is permanent you have value you are valuable you just being you you existing you really have to take that time to reflect and be willing to embrace this belief again that I am valuable and I am worthy regardless of what I do, what I have, what I make. They are not correlated, okay? Because I would find myself being very stressed out during times where I wasn't doing much, for example. And this was in the past as well when I was working towards becoming an accountant and then after that became a recruiter and then after that working to start this business as a career strategist there were times where there were lulls there were lulls in between those stages where i wasn't doing much i wasn't able to accomplish much because i needed that time to reflect and during those times i struggled with my feelings of inadequacy and worthlessness. And that was because of the fact that I felt like I had to be doing something all the time. And this is where workaholics, people who love to work 
or think they love to work tend to get their habits from. And I'm just here to tell you, you don't. You could just be sitting in the corner of a room in your house doing nothing all day and your value does not change. Who you are does not change. What you do is important, of course, but that has nothing to do with who you really are inside. And so if you can connect with that person, who you really are inside first, that person will then tell you what it is that you would love to do or what is right to do right now to help you to get moving forward. But if you're not paying attention to that person inside, the valuable person, the voice that's inside of each and every one of us, if we don't give that individual attention, what can happen is we get lost in the doing, we get lost in the achieving, and we lose that sense of ourselves and we feel disconnected and imbalanced. And that's how I've felt in the past. So I really wanna bring that to light. Okay, that was a really long rant for lesson number one, but it was really important. Now on to lesson number two, and that is I've learned is that my life is not a list of to-dos. Now this lesson is extremely closely related to lesson number one because lesson number one is all about your value and not having to do with anything related to what you do. And lesson number two is about saying that, hey, my life isn't just about milestones that I need to achieve or lists that I need to check off. And you know, I'm still struggling with this because I love lists. I love figuring out what do I need to do and planning ahead and scheduling things in and then doing them as I feel is necessary. And for those of you who also like to plan ahead and think things through, this can be hard because realizing that life isn't just a checklist means that you have to give up this sense of control over that aspect of your life. You have to realize that life isn't about you controlling your environment entirely. It's actually about letting go of what you think you can control and then living life and being present. Usually when you're in a time of turmoil like this, where you feel that things have fallen apart, it's actually because you have not paid attention to yourself for far too long. You were so caught up in the doing, in the taking the next step, just following this goal. You did feel insecure or you did feel uncomfortable, you did feel unhappy along the way, but you ignored it. And then all of a sudden, a big catastrophe happens and you are shaken up and you realize, oh my gosh, what is going on with my life? The reason why I can say this is because that happened to me. For you, those of you who don't know my story, this was years ago, but right when I got out of school, university, I realized that I had to be on a certain path, otherwise I wouldn't have a secure, stable career. And my path that I had chosen in university was to go down the accounting path. So I said, okay, I just have to get that CPA designation, I have to get that job at that big four accounting firm, and I'm set for life. And that's what I really believed. So I did everything in my control to get those goals achieved, but the truth was, as I was going through that process, it was not as easy for me as it was for other people. For me, I was struggling with the exams. I couldn't pass those CPA exams and I was failing year after year. And so it was delaying my ability to achieve that goal of achieving the CPA. And then when I was working at that big four accounting firm, I was not enjoying the work. I was not doing well at that because I didn't enjoy what I was doing. I found the work not in line with who I wanted to be and the work that I wanted to do. I just did not find any interest in it. So there were already signs along the way, but I was just trying to shove it all down and ignore it and continue to move forward. And then eventually I passed enough exams where I was able to write the big exam. And that big exam determined whether I would get my CPA or not. And I ended up failing that exam. And that meant I had to wait oh, another year to be able to write it. And that was when I had to reevaluate everything in my life and ask myself, what am I doing? Where am I going? What direction do I really want to head into? I mean, if I pass this exam next year, am I gonna stay in this accounting field? Do I really wanna work in this company? Do I really want to stay in the work that I'm doing? Do I wanna go down this path? And that was the point for me to be able to make that decision that no, I did not want to continue that after I passed. So 
long story short, I ended up passing. And of course, as you know, I became a headhunter recruiter for several years and then now I do what I do, but it was a process. And so for you, you have to ask yourself, you have to look back. You have, if there's a big, let's say you've failed something recently or you've lost something of value to you or something's just fallen apart completely and you're not sure why, you wanna do a bit of a look back to ask yourself, what led me to this? Were there already signs that I did not pay attention to, that I did not listen to? Was there maybe perhaps a checklist that I had placed as being the most important thing that I had to follow and everything else I ignored, my emotions, my feelings, how I was feeling on a day-to-day -day basis, I ignored that. Was that you? Because I know I did until it all just blew up in my face. So this is a lesson that I've learned. Life is not a checklist. It is not just about taking a straight line and moving forward. No, life is a winding path where you really don't know the way to turn right or left until you actually get to that point. And then you have to ask yourself internally what's right for you. So everything happens in the moment. Lesson number three that I've learned is to accept where you are because you are exactly where you're meant to be. This is something that I have struggled with so much throughout my life where I am just unable to accept where I'm at. And that is me being completely transparent and honest where I say, no, things should be better than they are and I wanna make them better. And you know, there's an aspect to that that is admirable, right? Because you're ambitious, you, you're motivated, you wanna improve things that you have or the way that you're living and the work that you're doing, you wanna improve yourself constantly. And that's great, there's always room for that and I think that's necessary as human beings for us to have that inner desire to want to improve ourselves and motivate ourselves to move forward. But if you're constantly dissatisfied with where you're at, and that's what I'm talking about here, that underlying sense of just unhappiness, underlying sense of frustration, underlying sense of dissatisfaction constantly, like you're just, you never feel good. Even if you're in a happy moment, something reels you back in to make you feel depressed again. That's where you really need to evaluate, okay, hold on, what's causing that? because what it likely is, is that you are resisting. You are resisting the current moment. You are resisting where you're at and you're not accepting what you have. You're not accepting yourself and you're not accepting your situation. And you know, especially when it comes to this coronavirus pandemic that we're in, a lot of us have been forced to accept the situation, accept where we're at right now, accept the fact that we have to stay at home, accept the fact that we can't go outside. And some people have really struggled with that. And if you're struggling with that, then you're struggling likely with other aspects of acceptance in your life. One of my favorite authors and speakers is Eckhart Tolle. And one of the quotes that I came across recently that he posted was a quote that talked about acceptance. And he said, acceptance means for now, this is what this situation, this moment requires me to do. And so I do it willingly. So it's time to ask yourself every day when you get up, what does this moment require me to do? It requires me to get up out of bed, make my bed, brush my teeth, walk the dogs, feed myself, change my clothes, whatever it is, that is what is required of you in that moment. If it's to open up your laptop, get ready for work, you know, start your report, whatever it is, then that's what that moment asks of you. That's all there is according to Eckhart and that's really the truth. We only really have this moment. So what does this moment require of you? You wanna ask yourself that every moment of every day because that's when you'll know what it is that you need to do. Rather than sitting and just thinking and wasting away your time, just focus on what it is that you want to do in this moment. And you know, I'll be honest, I still struggle with this because there are times where I sit and I think about what I wanna do in the next moment rather than what I should be doing in this moment or what I have to do in the next moment. And that stresses me out. There have been a lot of opportunities, especially with this pandemic that has given me the chance to just be more accepting, accepting that I'm really meant to be where I'm at right now. We are not really meant to be anywhere else. 
We're meant to be at home. We're meant to be with ourselves and we're meant to be where we're at from a mindset and emotional perspective. So let's accept that and let's explore it and let's give it the time and attention that it deserves and that it's been asking for. If you're struggling right now, if things aren't going well for you right now, it means that this is the time for you to reflect on it, to accept it, and then to grow from it. My fourth lesson that I've learned and that I'm still working on is to give yourself access to your inner voice at all times. So when I talk about inner voice, I mean the voice that belongs to who I really am inside. That person needs to be heard and she or he needs to be listened to. And this is the thing is that when we are so consumed with our external environment, we're so consumed with the things that we have to do, with the things that we want to achieve, with the people around us, with what other people think of us, we're so consumed with things that are completely outside of us, what ends up happening is we cut ourselves off from our own access to our inner voice. Your inner voice is also called your intuition. It's the voice that only you can hear and that really is your guiding light. It is the thing that drives you to want to pursue certain dreams and goals and take certain actions. And it's so important to be able to have access to that. And so, like I said, when we are consumed with our external environment, we lose track of our inner voice and we don't hear ourselves anymore. And that's when we feel disconnected. That's when we feel imbalanced and we feel like we've lost a sense of ourselves. And as I've said, I've gone through this many, 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 many times. It's when I find myself getting so consumed with work or consumed with things that are outside of my control, things that I want to do and I want to work on, but it really is just another way of me demonstrating my sense of wanting to control things and wanting to pursue things. And then I lose sense of my own inner voice. I find that honestly, I'm actually more effective and productive when I let go of those external voices and those external shoulds and must do's. And instead I sit back and I ask myself, what is right for me? What is the right next step for me? What action should I be taking now? Is this the right time to pursue this project or is it not? When I listen to myself, I am so much more effective and things work so much more smoothly. So for you dealing with the situation that you're in, if you're dealing with turmoil and like I said, hardships right now, it's likely because you've let go of your inner voice throughout this time and you haven't heard it speaking to you because our inner voice tends to whisper to us. We have to really be able to pay attention to it in order to hear what it's saying. And if you've completely shoved it out of the way, now all of this has happened to you to a point where you have no choice but to listen to your inner voice to ask for its guidance and its advice on what you need to do next. And your inner voice is you. Your inner voice is your truth. So give yourself access to that. A good way is through meditation, through breathing, through connecting with yourself, through journaling. Those are all gateways to connecting with yourself and your inner voice. And it's so important that you do so. And finally, lesson number five that I've learned is when I have an underlying sense of unhappiness, be willing to sit with it and ask where it came from. This is the key is that we can no longer shove our feelings and emotions down and suppress them. When you are experiencing a time where everything's fallen apart, you're experiencing hardships and turmoil, it's not the time to be suppressing it, okay? It's the time for you now to be asking yourself, all right, this has happened, so now what? Where did this come from? How did I not see it coming? What is it here to teach me? What do I have to recognize about myself that I need to improve on or shift for the future? Everything that happens to us happens to us for a reason. I really honestly believe that. And so if you're going through a tough time, this is a great time. That's because now you have the opportunity to really look at it and ask yourself, where did you come from? Why did you come here? What am I here to learn from you? What are you to here to teach me? and you get to explore all of that. And when you start to look at it from that perspective, all of a sudden your problem doesn't feel so emotionally 
consuming it you can separate yourself a little bit and see that this issue or this situation is separate from you and you have the ability to understand where it came from and then you can then heal from that and understand it but it takes time and it's a process and so essentially anytime that we go through something that's not so positive that's a really important time for you for us to sit with it look at it understand it and from there hopefully be able to heal from it so there you go those are my five personal life lessons that i have picked up uh, along the course of my life and that i'm still working on that hopefully will help you so if you are struggling with your career and you've been looking for a job for a while and you haven't been able to land that job offer and you realize that you want to get coaching and advice from me then feel free to reach out head on over to my website lindarainer.com slash standout get hired read through the page fill in the application form and if it seems as though we're a potential match then one of my teammates will be reaching out to you directly on top of that, if you are struggling with your resume or interviews, definitely check out my free resources. I have my resume mastery workshop, which is completely free. It'll teach you how to create a compelling, attractive resume that will attract hiring managers. And I also have my free interview strategy workshop, which will show you some techniques on how to also impress hiring managers in the interview. So if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share this with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.